Um, last but not least, I'd like to welcome to the stage um, Invest in Africa's Ghana's country manager, Mr. Clarence Nati. Okay, where's the... I can see we are very much in the heart of the graveyard slot. It's one thing being given a graveyard slot, it's quite another thing when you're in the heart of it. So, all I'll plead for is just about five minutes. If I can just um, engage you for five minutes, then I'll step away. I think then we have the last session. So, um, this is probably the end, yeah? It's gone backwards. So I'm surprised. Um, anyway, so... I've seen all the slides. Should I even continue? But anyway, so Invest in Africa. What I intend to do in the next couple of minutes is just to introduce the organization to you and then um, talk about some of the investment opportunities that we have presently. I recall the last time I was here, um, there was some concern about the fact that most of the conversations and the investment opportunities that had been showcased were of the you know, big ticket, medium sized ticket um, type of uh, tenure. So my goal is to at least show you, what, if, you, if you're still looking at investing but you don't have a $10 million or, or $5 million, there's still some investment opportunities that you can uh, put your money towards. So Invest in Africa, our vision is really about prospering African economies. And our goal is to be able to facilitate about $1 billion worth of business um, transactions by 2027 and in the process money to support or create about 100,000 jobs. Now, this is not very far-fetched. Uh, if you consider the fact that, you know, to date we've done about $150 million worth of business. And in terms of um, job creation opportunities, you know, cumulative, we're looking at about 80,000. So it's not far-fetched at all. It's not one of those statements we, we, we threw out there. Um, you know, if essentially our focus is on the lo you know, tackling the local content gap. We do three things, as I said earlier on during the panel discussion. Number one is that um, we try to connect foreign investors or large organizations to credible local suppliers. Then number two, we also build the long-term capacity and improve competitiveness of SMEs by providing them with better access to skills, finance, and markets. And then finally, like I said earlier again, we basically try to um, improve the investment climate you know, of the local markets in which we operate and also contribute to relevant policy um, documents. So for us, in terms of our priority sectors, we, we have what we call FACE IT. This is an acronym for the sectors we focus on. So it's financial services, agriculture, construction, extractives, that's oil and gas and mining, as well as ICT. And currently, in terms of our footprint, we're playing in West Africa, East Africa, and Southern Africa. Um, it's important to also mention the type of SMEs we, we, we look at. So for foreign investors who are looking for local partners, like the conversation we're having, uh, our starting point for the um, definition of which SME we bring on board is, is less of a turnover issue and more of a mindset issue. Because what you find is, you know, you find people in Ghana, SMEs that probably generate about $5 million a year, but they are prepared to remain where they are. These are, not, these are people who are not interested in scaling up. Uh, they want to retain 100% ownership of their business. Now, people like that, unless there is a, you know, a sort of um, desire to have a reorientation, we stay away from, from, from that ilk. We prefer those um, who may have a lower turnover, but have a desire to scale up because those are the people that are ready and, and can participate in some of these after opportunities we are talking about. Now, how do we deliver, you know, in terms of our, our, program, our programs, in terms of what we do to, you know, achieve the vision that we're talking about? We have three main pillars which uh, our work revolves around. As we, remember I said, it's about access to markets, skills, and finance. So for access to markets, we have created um, an online platform. It's a digital infrastructure that I itself owns. And that brings together about 50 buyers across Africa, uh, connects them to about 5,500 suppliers all over the uh, continent. And it's a very transparent um, way of transacting business. This way you cut out all the tenderpreneurs, which is a scourge 
on our business landscape in Africa. Everybody wants to make a cut for just uh, introducing you to somebody. All of that is taken care of by, by being on this platform where the um, you know, transactions are, are done seamlessly. Um, and also we have a socioeconomic impact tool. It's a, again another proprietary tool which we own. So for a multinational or large you know, investor who offers a contract that is you know, worn by a local supplier, you can actually track your socioeconomic impact with the awarding of the contract to the supplier. Access to skills, again, is a pivotal uh, part of our work. So, you know, it's, it's one thing being able to successfully bid for a contract, but it's another thing to remain continuously competitive. So through our skills program, again, with multilateral donor support from uh, the likes of AFDB, uh, they're putting over $1 million. We have a, a three-year business linkage program. And I want to emphasize the three years because a lot of people do one-day training, six-day training, and, and, and bandy it around as helping SMEs. But we all know that uh, for you to really make a difference, it's not uh, one-hour training with SMEs that makes a difference. We're talking about a long-term commitment, hand-holding, uh, mentorship, sometimes even on-site, you know, co-execution and implementation to ensure that the best practices are embedded in their day-to-day -day work. And then finally, the access to finance piece. Yes, we've had a long, uh, you know, so many discussions uh, today about access to finance. Now, what we do, uh, you know, from an IA perspective, is to de-risk the SMEs so that they are, they are probably now more bankable and investment ready for the banks to finance. So over the period, working with our banks to first understand their requirements and then um, investing in our own local business advisor who helps even prepare you know, some of the documents and even package the deals, we've been able to facilitate across Africa about $5.5 million worth of credit support for SMEs. I thought you were going to clap for us for that. I think this is the first time at least you're, you're hearing about some tangible SME support. So $5.5 million has been done. And let me add that um, you know currently in Ghana, one of, one of the reasons, by the way, we have this high interest rates is the, is the quantum of non-performing loans. You know, we're talking about $1.2 billion. The banks are sitting on that as non-performing loans. And you know uh, the architect of that? It's the SMEs. A large part of the, the bad loans are coming from the private sector, of which the SMEs constitute the bulk. I can tell you the 5.5 million is 0% default. So none of our SMEs has failed to stick to their repayment schedule. So hopefully this is the kind of leverage now we don't have. So when we're engaging with the future um, banking partners, we can negotiate for much more competitive interest rates because where you cannot look at our SME pool the same way you look at the general landscape because these are sufficiently de risked and they have proven with their repayment schedules that you, you cannot apply the same credit rating to them. So quickly on access to markets, this is probably you know, how it looks like in landing page. Like I said, um, this really for me is a game changer. When we talk about um, continental free trade agreement and the fact that um, you know, what's going to open up, one of the things that's going to come as, a, as an opportunity will be regional value chains. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to jump into um, you know, becoming an expert in regional value chains when you haven't mastered local value chains. So what we do again through this platform is really giving SMEs an opportunity to integrate into the supply chains of multinationals. If you can meet the standards of the likes of Talo, the, the standards of uh, the Modex and um, Anglo Golds and the MTNs, then chances are you can do same for transnational organizations that will come with the AFTA agreement. So it's a major, major platform for, for us. And um, it, it also includes a knowledge hub, by the way. So if you, if you were to have um, put in a bid for, say, uh, a tender that uh, Talo put on the platform, and unfortunately you are not able to win, there is a, a feedback loop that enables you to understand exactly why you failed to win the bid. And that in turn also informs the type of capacity building planning and program that we plan for the subsequent uh, period. So quickly, like I said, you know, it's, it's really about, not, it's not just about transactions, it's about supply development. We have the socioeconomic model as well. And it's, um, you know, the fact that you can, you can go to bed knowing that, you know, I has presented you with a credible list of suppliers to do business with. You're not going to have second thoughts about, is this a legit supplier? Is, does this person have audited financials? All of those things, we take it upon ourselves to independently validate so that when you're looking for that local partner, it takes the box. And you can then sort of start off on the premise that we're dealing with a credible crop. 
Um, these are just the numbers. Sometimes it's good to just soak it in a bit. These are staggering numbers. Uh, I know we are, we are pressed for time, but to be able to have supported 80,000 jobs, we know one of the biggest developmental challenges facing not just Ghana, but Africa as a whole, is unemployment. And to have um, a mechanism where a private sector initiative is, is driving such monumental change and impacting lives across the continent, I think this is phenomenal. Um, and just to put some human faces to the statistics, you know, sometimes you come up here and present a lot of numbers and people are wondering whether, are these real? But these are the, the, some of the suppliers on our pool uh, who are not only the medium-sized um, profile that we are looking at, but these are people who are also uh, success, are successfully integrated into the value chains of multinationals and are actively uh, playing in uh, regional waters now. Uh, we have about actually 30 or 40 or so SMEs who are already, if you like, after ready, because these guys are already, um, you know, doing business across Africa. And this is, is this, this, this particular slide, I think what is of interest is the 154 million. Now, because we tend to play in the local content solution space, I think it's worth emphasizing that of the $154 million worth of business that, has, that have been won by APP supplies, we almost 120 million, so almost 80% of that dollar value has actually been retained in country. And I think that's significant from a local content perspective. So whether it's household income, taxes, savings, all of that is actually been retained in country to drive the economic development of, of Ghana. And I want to close off with um, one slide which spells out some investment opportunities because this is an investment summit and um, I, would, I would want you to leave with um, at least an idea of if you wanted to be part of this vision of um, facilitating $1 billion worth of transactions and in the process creating 100,000 jobs. By the way, this was done before after. So Michael, we may need to review these numbers. Um, it probably may go much higher than that. But that said, there are three main uh, projects and, and that I think I can, I can put up for consideration. So first is about coming on board as a partner, you know, to, uh, to, you know, to support II, okay, and our work. And um, we have the priority sectors, which I talked about earlier on. Um, and if you're interested in this, or indeed if you have even adjacent sectors, maybe logistics, you know, which is pretty much a, an enabling sort of sector, we're happy to have a conversation around that. But you're looking at, you know, I mean, the numbers there, let, them, let, let that number not scare you, but it could be anywhere between 40, 50,000 to about $100,000, depending on the profile of the, of the business, we're, we're happy to, to have the conversation. But that way, you're a strategic partner. You can be guaranteed not just a social return on your investment, but also commercial returns. The likes of Talo, Modec, um, and uh, MTN, Backlist, GCB, uh, Ecobank, who work with us. Don't forget, it's not just about um, you know, the socioeconomic impact. That, but also, there is an element of a P&L impact. Because the, the Ecobank and Modic, for example, have gone on record to say they've sourced suppliers from our APP who have actually offered them more competitive rates than they actually had in their supply pool. So there is an incentive, both from a top line and a bottom line perspective as well, to do business with us. So that's on the first one in terms of a strategic corporate uh, partnership. The second one is a homegrown buyer project. And this is a project that we have um, created ourselves. I consider this a very, very uh, key part of our future. And essentially with this project, what we're trying to do is um, in as much as we want our suppliers to take advantage of opportunities for multinationals, we also want them to start doing business amongst themselves. So we've identified a number of partner, uh, suppliers who between them have a procurement, local procurement budget of almost $50 million. And we're bringing them together to facilitate business exchanges between the two. And, and it's a major project uh, with support from SIPS as well as um, you know, CIMG as well. And so if you're interested in that as well, that's also up um, for grabs. And then the last one is about SMEs, investable SMEs. Um, we have about 50 SMEs in our pool who are at a stage where it's no longer about you know, necessarily you know, um, short-term credit. They are looking for equity uh, partners. So if you're interested, and they cut across manufacturing, um, you have um, as well as uh, services, if you're interested, we can uh, show you a profile of these um, investable SMEs, and you can uh, also do business with us. So the said is, in closing, let me just say that um, this is Africa's decade, and um, we in Invest in Africa are very much poised to support the realization of that dream. TripAdvisor says um, 
those who are new to Africa, the advice is to start with Ghana. So if you're ready, we are ready for you to help with the soft landing. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Hopefully we've got it. Thank you very, very much, Clarence.